President, what about the Supreme Court and the Independent Counsel Act? Hi, how are you? What about the Supreme Court decision, Mr. President? Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Congressman Tommy Mack. I would like to introduce to you um, the Republican candidate for the United States Senate in Florida, a great congressman and a fighter for liberty and freedom in the United States as well as around the world, Connie Mack. Jeb, thank you very much. Uh, first, let me just say thanks to uh, the President for not only making the trip to come down here and support me in my campaign, but also making the special effort to have a few moments to meet with you uh, to listen to some of your concerns. Um, as you know, I started my campaign down in Key West, Florida, and I picked that spot because I wanted to make a very clear statement about the importance of freedom as an objective in our foreign policy. And I did that because it's only 90 miles from the coast of Cuba, and I, I wanted to make the point about the Cuban people living under the harsh uh, and absolute domination of a communist tyrant. And so it is a great honor for me to be here today with the President of the United States. I would say the chief freedom fighter in the country today. Mr. President? Tommy, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm very pleased to be here with Connie Mack, who has been such a staunch fighter for everything that's good in Washington. And uh, I'm hoping that all of you will make sure that we get him back in Washington. Thank you, sir. But uh, 
And I'm very pleased to meet with all of you again. I have one thing that I would like to reiterate, and namely that as far as this administration is concerned, the freedom of Cuba and Cubans is non-negotiable. The rumors in the, well, that in your community that there'll be a thaw or a warming in our relations with Cuba are unwarranted, and they're based on false beliefs that my administration is secretly plotting to become friends with Fidel Castro. Well, he is responsible for continued human rights violations and for spreading war and terrorism throughout the world. And Castro is not and never will be a friend of this administration. I've worked diligently to fight the spread of communism all over the world. As one example of our efforts against Castro's brand of communism, we have founded Radio Marti. And thanks to Connie Mack's commitment, plans are now underway to establish TV Marti, which will give Cubans a chance not only to hear from, but also to see the free world. We've taken forceful actions in repelling Soviet and Cuban-backed forces in Nicaragua, Angola, and other areas around the world. Communism as a form of government is a proven failure. But my administration will not apologize for participating in talks that may bring peace to war-torn areas, including Angola, a poor country that has been ravaged by fighting perpetuated by Castro. I wish for this region to be free and stable. With peace and democracy, there is an opportunity for growth. Two years ago, we initiated a worldwide offensive against the human rights violations of political prisoners in Cuba. I appointed a brave Cuban-American, Armand Valladeros, as our ambassador to lead the United States delegation at the United Nations Human Rights Commission at Geneva, Switzerland. He, Ambassador Valladeros, has been critically important in our effort to bring sanctions against communist Cuba for its human rights abuses. For the first time, after our American representatives at that commission, that we have tried to point to the violation of human rights going on in Cuba. This time, with his leadership, we succeeded and a UN commission has been appointed to go and examine for itself to see the violation of human rights in, in, in Cuba. We, for two years ago, we, well, I think I've, said about all I can say on that. We're working hard to find ways to bring freedom-seeking Cubans to the United States where they can start new and more productive lives. And during the next several months, I expect our programs will bring thousands of Cubans to our shores. This administration has been active in its opposition to the Soviet-supported Marxist rule of Castro. And as I said to many of you on May 20th, Cuban Independence Day, in the heart of the Americas, the long night of totalitarian rule cannot endure forever. So long live the dawn of freedom and viva Cuba Libre. Uh, Dr. Gomez. Uh, Mr. President, before everything, I would like to say I am here to us to discuss certain problems with our community. We thank also you for your statement, because you have expressed in very precise terms that there is not any possibility of normalization of uh, the relationships of the U.S. government with the Cuban government, and that statement is very gratifying to all of us. We know, Mr. President, that you have been a great champion of freedom of democracy of human rights throughout the world. We know also that you have not been able to do in this connection all the things that perhaps you had in your mind, but you have accepted and you have faced great difficulties to help the, the cause of freedom. I remember here in America, for example, in the Caribbean, the case of Grenada, in Central America, Nicaragua, and all the rest of the Latin American or the Central American countries that has been receiving substantial help from your government. And for all these things, Mr. President, we admire, we respect you, and we love you. 
But I'm sorry to say that besides these things, there are certain confusing elements in the foreign policy of the United States in regard to the case of Cuba. We know that these things do not come from you because you know, we know very well your position, but from other uh, sources or circles of your government. I referred, for example, to certain cultural exchanges that have taken place recently to the granting of visas to some show people coming from Cuba who are in fact political agents of the Cuban government and that has been going around the country spreading their communist propaganda to the recent immigration agreement, to the exchange of nuclear technicians, to the rumors of developing some commercial relationships and weaken the embargo against Cuba, to some move to improve the communications between the two countries. These things, I'm sorry to say, Mr. President, <clears throat> we feel that are a little confusing and give to the public the idea that the U.S. is interested in increasing its friendly relationships with Cuba and eventually to normalize its relationships with that regime. We would like to hear your opinion in connection with these precise points so that we can convey your message and your ideas to our community who you, you know love you very much. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. If, if I understand correctly, I'm having a little trouble with a hearing aid here <laughs> this morning. If I understand you correctly, though, you did, did you say that we had people uh, coming into the United States who representing the Castro government and? No, I said, Mr. President, that recently has been granted to Tropicana, the Trupe of Tropicana. And these uh, uh, people are, in fact, agents, political agents of the government. And they have been here in the United States. And they have come to New York, to Los Angeles. And of course, as political agents, they have been spreading their, their communist propaganda. I'm, well. See, and the, the uh, State Department have given visas to this uh, troupe. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry about I'm this. Sorry. <laughs> I think I've got a battery failing here. <laughs> um, well, I'm, uh, I guess I haven't paid much attention to that. I'll look into what you've just told me, and if that's what is going on, uh, yes, we'll take action. And uh, I shall look into it. That's about the only answer that I can give you right now, because you've told me something I was not aware of. Okay. Well, we are very grateful for your attention, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, Alfonso Perez. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Alfonso Perez, and on behalf of the Cuban community, I thank you, sir, Governor Martinez, Mr. Cortellis, the Republican Party, and last but not least, Congress Congressman Connie Mack, with whom I serve uh, as co-chairman in Dade County. Uh, Mr. President, the issue that I wish to bring before your attention, sir, is the issue of the Orlando Bosch case. The case is a case that, in the opinion and the consensus of this community, is not a legal matter. It's a diplomatic, a political matter. The man has served for 11 years in a Venezuelan prison and been acquitted twice. I must tell you, sir, that as an attorney, I find that incredible. He, because it's not a legal case, most respectfully, sir, it's a political case, it is undoubtedly clear that the Cuban government has used Orlando Bosch as a pawn and is undoubtedly clear that should the Immigration and Naturalization Service take the action which it has promised, and that is deport Orlando Bosch on July 7th, that is akin to signing his death warrant, sir. Uh, Mr. Castro has already said that publicly, and from reliable and credible sources, I have materials here for your consideration if you would like, specifically a defector from the Cuban government, has publicly stated that if Orlando Bosch is deported from this country, he will be summarily killed. And we implore of you to take action if well, you I would be glad to have that additional information because I have uh, 
knowing that this was of concern to people here, I have some information with me that is, is a little counter to some of the things you said. His re-entry into the United States was illegal, but there isn't much that I can say about his situation because much of the information regarding his case is part of the ongoing legal proceeding. And it's my understanding that the Immigration and Naturalization Service is currently reviewing his case. So I would appreciate having that and seeing that they get it. But in any event, I can tell you this. He will not be removed from the United States without an opportunity for a full and fair hearing and a complete review of his case by the courts. But I, I, as I say, I can't continue with some of the information that I have because of the legal ramifications of that and commenting public, because I'm sure you of the law could well understand. Thank you, sir. The so, only uh, but I can assure you of that last, that there will be a full and final hearing before any action is taken. I thank you for that opportunity, Mr. President. Anyone, anyone else had a question? I think that's. I think we probably have to go on to the event to uh, sure. raise a little money for Congressman Mack. I go. I'm getting a signal that I guess I have to move on to the next event. I was hoping that I could stay for some more, <laughs> some more questions. Well, there will be another time for that. So I'll just uh, take the congressman with me, and when I go, and uh, I just desperately hope that very shortly you'll have to learn to call him Senator.
campaign for the next United States Senator from Florida, Congressman Connie Mack. Yes, soaring prices and a sinking economy. That's what the other fellows, with all their lip service about compassion, inflicted on the American people. The economists called it stagflation. The Democrats termed it malaise. The liberal pundits said it was part of America's inevitable decline. But we came in and said the only thing that was inevitable all but certain presidential candidate is elected that he would raise taxes? Yep. In fact, he just did. Not only has he hiked taxes as governor of Massachusetts, but in the last five years, he has increased Massachusetts.
That's how it'll ever work, too. 